Hey yo folks, Dudadich here and welcome to Demonology Warlock Specialization Overview. And in this video I will over I'll be going through the different specializations that are available to every class and how they have gone through changes since patch 7.0 upcoming to Legion. Today I will be discussing the demo the de demonology specialization which has probably has gone through the most significant change with this particular patch. As we all know, anyone who is familiar with the original knows that they used to be very similar to, well, they basically became a very highly focused personal demonic in influence character with the ability to, of course, of metamorphosis. But with demon hunters now getting into the picture, metamorphosis has been removed and they have been turned into what makes much more sense, which is a summoning kind of idea. So, they've really been changed into a summon idea, which makes much more sense considering how they work. So, that has been changed and makes sense. As expected, their entire idea is, of course, the uh, the uh, the use of their demons in their abilities. And that's pretty much part of their entire kit. So, I'm going to make a few changes. In this particular one, I will only be going through the abilities that are different compared to the destruction warlock as I've already got one of those so you won't be finding the same kind of, so I won't be going for the same as well as that I will only be showing off one demon which is of course the fell guard since that's the only different demon that you'll find in this particular specialization that actually as all the others has given a bit of a significant you know detailed model as you can see there's a much more deeper detail you can actually see pupils and it looks just much more better than the old one now the whole idea of the demonology warlock is of course about the control and empowerment of its demonic pets that's basically the entire gist of it they have different talents some of their abilities are different as you can see you still have some of the basics there are a few new ones which i will show off now the standard ability for the demonology warlock is Shadow Bolt, it's about as simple as you can get. Their damage over time effect is in fact that. Hand of Gul'dan is something that they use in particular that makes them strong, as well as that it causes you to summon imps that start, of course, also damaging the enemy target in particular. As you can see, there's another ability that makes particular use of this entire idea, which is called Dreadstalkers, which is a new ability that summons a pair of a pair of these demonic hounds that will start long off the face of your enemies and this is pretty much their standard idea as you can see it's still it'll help on as a much more important ability in this particular one so you might want to consider how to use that as i said this is pretty much their entire kit and it's the, how they're gonna work the next ability that we'll be discussing is demonic empowerment which is basically it empowers your demons and causes them to do more damage so this is basically part of the entire thing the second one is demon wrath which basically causes a channeling uh, cast that causes that all your demonic pets do aoe damage so this is basically what you're going to be using when you need good cleaving effect considering that they lack it on certain occasions they still hold of course to some of their other original ideas which is of course the ability of life tap as well as life drain so that is pretty much on that. They also, of course, just like the others, have the Summon Doom Guard and Infernal idea. But there's nothing really new on that front. So, with that out of the way, let's get to the interesting bit, which is, of course, the idea of its of its talents, which is definitely are very different compared to the destruction on certain occasions. There are still a few that are similar, but some of them are quite different compared to the other one. So let's get with the first ones that are found in the f level 15, which is Shadowy Inspiration, Shadow Flame, and Demonic Calling. Let's start with Shadowy Inspiration. Demonic Empowerment also causes your next Shadow Bolt to be instant. So this one is pretty very simple. You use this and all of a sudden your Shadow Bolt becomes instant. It's uh, pretty useful if you know how to use it. But considering how it works, it's it's a nice little extra, you know, a little spike of damage you could use in a pinch. So not bad, but not sh very sh not really sure if it really pays off. I guess it's not bad because it allows you to, uh, you know, get these little damage spikes up. Next up is Demonic Calling, which is Shadow Bolt has a 20% chance and Demon Wrath has a 5% chance on a 
Actually, it might be a little bit better if I actually show this off. So let's get this done. So I do this and boom, Shadow Bolt is on instant. So that's pretty similar to that. And next up is Demonic Calling. Shadow Bolt has a 20% chance and Demon Wrath has a 5% chance on each target to make your next call. The Dreadstalker costs no soul shards. So this is actually a pretty good ability if you know how to use it. So basically this actually has some pretty good effect because it allows you to get those Dreadstalkers out immediately not having to rely on two on soul shards too much as i already explained called dress dark is basically a sort of dire beast but then for demonology warlocks like the dire beast has for the beast mastery specialization so i got this so let's start off with that and as i do this there's a chance that i actually have So there is a 20% chance of this, so who knows when this is going to happen. As you can see there it happened, it triggers, and now when I use Cold Red Stalkers, it doesn't cost me any soul shards. So this is a pretty useful ability if you know how to use, if you keep an eye on those procs. Luckily it does indicate it pretty easily, so that shouldn't be a problem. And next up is Shadow Flame. Lobs a ball of Shadow Flame at the target, dealing Shadow Flame damage immediately and another over. So this is basically something that allows you to do some extra damage on the enemy target at quick succession so let's test it out and see how it does so this apparently has charges that can be used and apparently they they stack up when it comes to their damage amount so i don't know exactly how this works with the recharge and effectiveness considering that it says it stacks up to three times yet you only have two charges at maximum so this is a bit of a strange one, but it is a good way if you need some really quick soul shards whenever required. To be honest though, compared to the other two, I wouldn't say that this one is that as reliable as the others. So if I have to be honest, I would either go with this or this because they're both pretty good in their consideration. Now, next up is Impending Doom. Doom also summons one wild imp. This is pretty useful because... Uh, this means you'll get some extra imps whenever you need them. So, as it says, whenever Doom does damage, or at least it should be doing that. So, ah, I get it. So that's only at the end of it. So whenever this... So whenever this damages, it pops out a wild imp. Which is pretty sweet, but considering it's only at the end of it, it's not as useful as you might think so this is maybe not the most reliable form of damage considering you have to wait until this expires before it does its damage because it's 18.7 seconds that's pretty serious so I wouldn't rely too much on this if you really want a good wild imp summoning you are better off using this <coughs> so next up is improved dreadstalker it's called dreadstalker and I also apply also summons two wild imps so basically they ride in with the with the fell hunter with those dread stalkers. So as you can see, I summon this and immediately these imps show up on actually truly the fell hounds and start as the fell hounds are attacking, the imps will also do that damage. So properly using this this isn't that bad of a spell if you know how to use it properly. So you might want to consider how to use that pretty well. Now the next up on the so this actually, of course, like I said, you need to know how to use it properly well, but Call Dread Stalkers is one of your more high damage tools, so you pretty much want to spam this whenever you can. Of course, it does require two soul shards, so be careful with that. Next up, and of course, it just helps. So next up is Implosion. Now this one is a little different because you're going to need to do a little work for this because as the little, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, and all that kind of crap you do, as it says, it basically creates a... Destructive, it turns your imps into destructive little fuckers. It basically turns them into IS uh, uh, suicide bombers, basically. So what it does, for example, let's build up some... Let's get some soul shards in so we can actually... Summon in these little imps, and as I do that, they, of course, usually start doing damage to everybody around them. But when I activate this, they run into the target and then detonate and do quite a bit of splash damage. This, of course, still requires you to know how to use it properly. Be careful with this because it requires a little bit of work and you need to make sure that you've got enough imps to actually make that work. So, although it might be useful, know how to use it properly or else you're just going to get, you know, 
sort of uh, a bit of a downgrade of availability. It's something you need to work for. It's I don't mind it. It works cool in synergizing, but it's not my preferred one. If I have to say this one is probably the one I would go for. Next up is, of course, a new level 45. It's Demon Skin, Mortal Coil, and Shadow Fury again. So I can basically skip this entire tier because it is still the same. Now, also, next up is Hand of Gold, Hand of Doom, which is a passive which enhances your Hand of Gul'dan, which causes that when Hand of Gul'dan actually drops onto the ground, it actually also applies Doom to all enemies within area. This is actually particularly useful because it allows you to get even more imps out, which is basically what you need. It's all about getting these demons out, so you really, really... Sh should rely on this very well. You saw it before with the imp in order to the demonstration of the imp. When the meteor came down, it also summoned, it also plays doom upon everyone. This one will be particularly useful in cleaving considering you'll do some extra damage during cleaving attacks. Of course, and let's hope these are mobs that don't die too easily, but still, if it's against tougher mobs, it helps a bit and it gets you more damage thanks to those wild imps that summoned from it. So that's pretty much that. It's pretty self-explanatory, as I said, the demonstration, I can show it again, as you can see, I drop this meteor down, and everyone in the local vicinity gets the Hand of Gul'dan, gets that Doom, so which they will take damage after a long cast, so that's pretty much that, it makes it pretty, s s very straightforward to what it does, and of course, if you got the impending Doom, it'll get those imps out, so pretty fun. Pretty sweet if you know how to use it. Now, Power Trip is a little differently, which is Demonic Empowerment has a 50% chance to generate one Soul Shard when used in combat. So, like I said, Demonic Empowerment empowers your demons, which gives them increased haste. This works if you want some matter of proper extra Soul Shard generation, which you're going to be needing. But to be honest, if I have to say, this isn't really a requirement because you'll be getting quite a few soul shards thanks to doom as well as shadow bolt so this isn't really a requirement so it's best to hold on this because it gets you doom so whoever gets hit with this gets the same benefit next up we've got the level 70 the tier 75 oh yeah by the way the soul harvest still remains in this particular tier as well so this one can be cast aside as well next up we've got in the 75 is practically this is the same as well as in the destruction specialization which is demonic circle burning grass and dark pact as i've described before it is still the same demonic circle allows you to create a circle that allows you to teleport back to it burning grass is a speed boost and dark pact is a high damage absorption shield pretty sweet but of course, it's the same as, again, Grimoire of Supremacy is also the same, as well as Grimoire of Service. The only difference is because you're a Demonology Warlock sacrificing your your demon is kind of weird, because, well, you're very pretty dependent on this guy. So, what you actually get is Grimoire of Synergy. Damage done by your by you or your demon has a chance to grant the other one 40% increased damage for 15 seconds. If, to be honest, you really want to have just that like, little extra, it's a chance. So, what I'm going to do is put it up. I'll have him attack, so let's have him attack, and there should be a chance, as you can see, the proc already happened, so it's a pretty high proc chance, actually, and as I'm doing damage as well, he should be getting it as well, so that's a pretty sweet deal, if you think about it. So, as you can see, it triggered again, there's a pretty high chance, apparently, particularly if it's, it's only with the summon demon that you actually summon, so... To be honest, in this particular set, I'd say it really depends on what you really like. So, you basically can pick and choose whatever you want. So, within this particular, within the 90 tier, you can actually choose. Either get Supremacy or Synergy. If you really like the idea of having an extra demon along for the ride, it's not bad to grab up Surfeits. Service. I'm not telling you what to create the optimal build. This is not what this is about. It's just a simple overview of all the abilities, and as described... It all just depends on what your taste is and on how you like to create a build. There's, of course, if you really want to get the uh, more proper, you know, the optimal rotation, I'm sure you can find, find Wowhead if you're a devoted Wow player and you can find what you need in order to create that. Up to that point, though, this is just an overview of how this is. So please do not consider anything I tell you here as an optimal build. This is basically on how I would build my Demonology Warlocks. So please do not take this considering as at as a demand on if you want to create the perfect damage build 
I never really liked that idea in the first place. Next up on the level 100, we've got Summon Dark Lair, Demon Bolt, and Soul Conduit. Soul Conduit still holds the same. I think this one can be found in every specialization, considering it's all around, well, you know, utility. Next up is Demon Bolt, which replaces Shadow Bolt, draws energy from your demons, and launches a ball of demonic energy at the target, dealing chaos damage, and damage is increased by 20% for each demon. So this one, again... It's kind of this idea that you need to work for it, so you need to know how to use it. So this is actually not something you open up with from the start, but this is something you actually... Well, it is what you maybe open up with, but it's not what you... So basically this turns what is usually your soul shard generator and actually turns it into a much more powerful version of it. So let's get it out here. And test this bad boy out. What I do here is just getting it out. And as you can see, I activate Demon Bolt. And as you can see, it has nice particle effects, and I do it again. I get these get a little guys out, and as you can see, the damage starts ramping up. It's a pretty significant amount. I wonder if it can get really out of hand. So let's see. Now I've got even more demons up. And as you can see, the damage can ramp up quite well if you've got enough demons out. So this pretty much works out pretty well. But like I said, you need to know how to use it properly, which involves the u pretty the utilization of having proper control of the demons. So this one really makes you work to what towards having good damage output through the demons. If you're a good demonology warlock, this shouldn't be a problem. If you are not such a big fan, I do not recommend it. But then again, if you're not a very you know fan of the whole pet system, demonology warlock should not be your taste. Then, if you still want to be a demonology warlock, but not so much want to synergize too much that it requires you to work through demons to get your damage, I wouldn't recommend this and get Soul Conduit or the other one, which is Dark Glare. Summons a Dark Glare for 12 seconds. That launches eye lasers at all targets afflicted by your doom, dealing well shadow damage at that time so this one is a little interesting I think it could work if you know how to use it so I say let's test it out so I put these two with that and, and I get it out and as you can see this is a pretty sweet new model they put in as you can see he constantly starts barraging the enemies that were applied with doom with this constant effect I don't know if it works in such a way that it actually also works on those who get you know, constantly retargeted with it, or that it only works on the ones that are marked with Doom when you use it. So that's pretty much up to you. It is a bit of a strange one because it does give some extra cleaving, but at this point, considering how this entire design of the Demonology Warlock works, I wouldn't say that it is a requirement. But again, it's up to you, Tate. If you want even more demons to start messing up your enemy, Summon Dark Lair is definitely a good option. But up to that point, it is all up to you. It is your choice. That is always something that the specializations were about. Of course, that changed, of course, with the whole with the tree system because everything about optimal rotation. So they changed it to this system, which I have to say I'm still very much big a bigger fan of. Up to this point, this it's still pretty much what you can expect from a demonology warlock. It's all about controlling hordes of demons. Even though, of course, the original one. Of course, the one that was introduced into, well, I don't know, was it maybe Cataclysm? I don't even know when the Metamorphosis became, like, part of the entire kit. But I have to say, does this much makes more, that this one makes much more sense within the idea of a Demonology Warlock. You are not supposed to be someone yourself who is empowered with the stuff. You're supposed to be a guy who gets actually some form of... You know, who's a master summoner, who can summon really, like, small armies of demons to just crash down on their enemies it really depends on what your taste is though anyway i still hope you guys have enjoyed this video this has been the overview of the abilities and talents of the demon demonology warlock i hope you guys have enjoyed the video stick around for the rest i will be trying to get these ones as out as fast as i can hope you guys have enjoyed the video and i'll see you on to the next one and i'll see you then bye bye